I mix GGD Invasion like this. Hi, you here. So GGD released P5 kits recently, and in this video, I'm going to talk about GGD Invasion. Why? Because so recently I listened to a song uh, called Idle Hands by K Mac, and in this song, uh, GGD Invasion is used. Yes, uh, it was really amazing for me because so in in my opinion, that GGD Invasion is the most difficult drum library in my life because I haven't mixed uh, libraries like this. But in this song, yes, uh, Idle Hands Invasion is really sounds great so i thought okay i have to practice uh, mixing ggd invasion so in this video i'm going to talk about ggd invasion and also what makes ggd invasion unique and also uh, really difficult to mix by the way in this video i'm going to use tons of plugins which are not free so if you want to watch a uh, kind of a mixing tutorial with free plugins i have already uh, uploaded a video series of uh, mixing tutorial of with free plugins so yeah please check it out okay so without further ado let's get started okay so first of all let's listen to the drums in solo and sounds like this Yeah, sounds great for me. Okay, so this is my GGD Invasion sound. This is the uh, default setting of GGD Invasion. Okay, let's listen to that. Okay, let me talk about what makes GGD Invasion unique and also difficult to mix. So first of all, kick and snare and oh thumbs so shells so shells are really uh, attacky i guess so i think so and also they don't have enough mid-range and also uh, low end so i haven't uh, mixed libraries like this for example i have mixed kind of bfd2 and 3 and superior drama 3 and uh, perfect drums one and so on yeah i have mixed tons of drum libraries but i haven't use libraries like this so this is really unique that's why people can't uh, mix ggd invasion well i haven't seen people mixing ggd invasion really well probably two or three people yeah can mix ggd invasion well but basically on youtube yeah people can't mix ggd invasion well so reason why is like i said they Invasion doesn't have enough mid-range and also a uh, low end. So, but this attack is really uh, distinctive, I guess. So, I want to use this uh, distinctive attack as much as possible, or as loud as possible. Okay, let's move on to the mix-up panels. So, I cracked out a room sound of a kick, snare, and thumbs. Okay, so let's listen to them. Yeah, so this room sound is really distinctive. I want to use this room sound as much as possible. So when I listen to Edo Hands by k -Mac, I immediately notice that, oh, this is invasion. Yes, because of that room sound. Yes, so I want to use this room sound as much as possible, as loud as possible. Okay, let's move on to my kit. So in my kit, I used a Black Beauty, but other than that, uh, these are basically default. So I use uh, default kick and tams and I didn't use a high tam on the fast uh, floor tam yeah and also let me let me talk about this snare so this snare is a uh, black beauty and the reason why I use black beauty is that this one has the most mid rangey sound okay let's listen to the all of the snares in this library. Yes, I think this one or this one or uh, which one? Yes, or this one is the most uh, mid-rangey sound. But Vinnie Paul one is 
kind of too low and this doesn't have enough attack uh, which is a uh, most uh, important thing in invasion so i didn't use uh, this one and i use this one yeah so basically this is my kit but so as i said uh, earlier in default kit uh, section i i think that uh, invasion doesn't have enough low end and mid range so in order to compensate that uh low end and mid range i used uh, samples and in this video i used a tmkd vortex sample pack uh, which is free so and then i used kick and snare samples okay as for kick sounds like this so this kick has a really rich and uh, low end and mid range and also this kind of a little bit phasey uh, high end is a uh, really uh for me and then and Invasion doesn't have this type of phasey kick, so uh, in order to compensate that phaseyness, I guess, so then I use this kick uh, sample. And also snare, this sound. So the reason why I use this sound is that so this sound has a very uh, mid rangey and also it doesn't have tons of attack which Invasion has. So I thought that this snare can compensate a range uh, which um, Invasion doesn't have so then that's why i use this snare okay so basically that's all now i can start mixing invasion okay so let's get started with a kick so as for kick i used this one and this one so in order to match the phases so so i used old align so basically uh, this is a kind of so phase matching plugin i guess but if you export a wave and then so you uh, manually uh, can align them so really correctly then so you can uh get the exact same result so then you don't have to use this plugin but i love this plugin because it's really useful okay so let's uh, listen to before and after before after So if I turn on this uh, plugin, then a low end is going to be a little bit uh, kind of turned up because that phase is well aligned. So then uh, we don't have to care about the phase issue now. Okay, so now I can mix uh, the, this kick or these kicks. Okay, then I start with uh, virtual mix rocks because that uh, recently I've been really into analog vibe, so which I can't uh, get uh, in the box, but I've been really into this type of sound. So then I use this uh, virtual channel to imitate kind of uh, console saturation or compression and so on. Okay, so sounds like this. Yeah, difference is really tiny, but so if I turn on this virtual channel, the mid range is gonna be a little bit a uh, punchier, and also the high end is a little bit saturated. So then, for me, this is really analog vibe and so on. Yeah, that's why I use this plugin. Okay, then next one is an EQ, and so yeah, basically, so this type of EQ. Okay, so before, after. Yeah, so basically I uh, cut on uh, tons of the ranges because of that ear piercing frequency and uh, these uh, kind of excess uh, mid range and also this uh, excess low end and then I uh, used uh, low pass filter and high pass filter. Yeah, that's all. So basic steps. Okay, then next one is compressor. Yeah, sounds like this. Yeah, difference is really tiny and basically uh, as for kicks, I always uh, apply uh, 
around minus 2 dB uh, gain reduction. So reason why is then, so if the gain reduction is above uh, minus 2, well, below minus 2, I, I don't know what which is correct, whatever, whatever. If the gain reduction is minus 4, so the sound is going to be uh, really kind of squashed. I don't really like that sound. So then I always set the compression around minus 2 gain re uh, dB gain reduction. Yeah. Okay, so again. Yeah, then I always set attack at uh, 30 milliseconds and the release is always uh, fastest. Yeah, uh, ratio is uh, 6 by 1, but so I always uh, see this uh, gain reduction. Yeah, basically uh, for me, ratio is not important. Yeah, okay. Next one is a uh, virtual tape machine. So reason why I use this tape machine is, as I said in the uh, virtual channel, so I, I am really into uh, analog vibe. And also, uh, this one has a really interesting effect. So if I turn on this effect, the uh, sound is going to be a little bit punchier and mid-range punchier. And also that uh, the transient is going to be a little bit attenuated yeah i tend to push the transient too much uh in every mixing session so in order to compensate uh, that um kind of bad habit so i always turn on this uh, uh tape machine okay so let's listen to that Yeah, super punchy and also it uh, it has really mm, well balanced uh, transient uh, around high end. Yeah, so that's why I always use this tape machine. Yeah, then last one is uh, clipper. So sounds like this. It's uh, the sound is gonna be really loud. So then please be careful. Okay, sounds like this. Yeah, so sometimes sometimes people say so that clipper has a really saturation effect or something. In my opinion, I don't feel this type of saturation on clipper plugins. Reason why I use clippers is that clippers don't shape off attack. So that's why I use clippers every single shell uh, track. Yeah, so okay, so this is a kick kick drum close sound okay then let's move on to the kick drum room sound okay so kick drum room sound so basically uh, this is a copy and paste from the kick drum close mic and sounds like this okay before okay super quiet so okay crank up okay so sounds like this Yeah, but so basically that so sound is really quiet. So then you don't have to think about it. Yeah, and also I used uh, same EQ. Reason why I use this, uh, the same EQ is that you wanna not to care about um, phase issue uh, from the kick drum close mic. So that's why I use the same uh, EQ onto this uh, kick drum room mic. Okay. Then next one is the uh, virtual, yes, virtual mix rack. And then I used 1176-ish um, um, plugin in order to get explosive sound. Okay, so before, after. Yeah, this explosive sound is really distinctive and this is really unique. So then I always use onto room mics, so such as a kick drum room mics and snare room mics and tam room mics. Yeah, okay. Next one is a virtual tape machine in order to uh, get in order to get analog vibe. And also last one is clipper. Yeah, but basically the sound is like this. Yeah, super quiet, so then you don't have to care about it, yeah? Then next one is snare close mic. Okay, so as for snare close mic, okay, so uh, in solo sounds like this.
Okay, super quiet. Okay, I'll crank it up. Yeah, this is uh, from the uh, GGD Invasion. Yeah, Black Beauty. But so as I said earlier, it doesn't have enough mid range and also low end. So I used this watch of sample. Yeah, also I always use near overhead sound. Okay, so this is a overhead sound from GGD Invasion. Okay, so let's crank it up. Yeah, so in my opinion, overhead mics always has the biggest information from the snare. For example, if you uh, listen to snare close mic in solo, in my opinion, that so snare sound is a doesn't sound like snare. So, but if you listen to snare overhead in solo, the sound is like snare. That's why I thought that snare overhead mic is really important to use. So I use near close mic and a sample and overhead mic at the same time. So in order to use them uh, without thinking about phase issues, so I used uh, auto align as I said earlier uh, in the kick drum section. So then let's listen to the before and after. Okay, before. After. Yeah, so if I turn on uh, these plugins, the snare is going to be punchier. So then, so I love this plugin. So, but as I said earlier, if you export it, the the sound in wave, then you can uh, align them manually. So then you don't have to use these plugins, but it's really useful. Actually, this is a really game changer for me. So I haven't used this type of really niche plugin in my life, but this is a game changer. And also this is a time saver for me. Yeah, I love this one. Okay, okay. so then let's uh, process uh, snare close and uh, sample and overhead sound at the same time. So, as I said earlier, so then I always use uh, kind of this type of console emulation plugin. Understand? Sounds like this. The sound is gonna be a little bit punchier. Yeah. Okay. Then next one is EQ. Okay. Before. This song's BPM is 270. Yeah, this is really a uh, high speed song. So then, so I cut this mid range a lot, but I said that so Invasion doesn't have enough mid range. So probably you guys think it's kind of really contradicted. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But reason why is that so that I don't have to use this mid-range, so I compensated that uh, mid-range by using uh, samples. So, and also we have to separate and think about that, that uh, texture of the sound is uh, really different. For example, if I didn't use this uh, sample, that the snare sound is not, not punchier than uh, before. So that's why I use this sample to get punchy sound. But so in order to get this punchy sound, that mid range is a little bit uh, too much. That's why I cut this range. So, so it's, it looks really contradicted, but uh, in fact, it's not. Yeah, mixing is really complicated. So sometimes it looks really kind of uh, confusing, but yeah, so that's why mixing is very fun. Yeah, and interesting, yeah. Okay, so next up is compression. So uh, as for compression, I always apply around minus 60 dB gain reduction onto snare. Okay, let's listen to that. Yeah, so it's gonna be really punchy, okay. Then, so attack is 30 and release is uh, fastest and ratio is uh, 6 by 1. Okay, 
Then next one is a uh, table machine. Sounds like this. Yeah, this song is really fast. So if I turn up this uh, knob, the snare is gonna be really mid-range rich. However, if the sound is really mid-range rich, that the song is gonna be really messy. So then I didn't turn up tones. Okay, so let's listen to the snare uh, with, a pro, uh, with uh, 11 dB input and like this. Yeah, tons of difference. So actually, if the song is really slow, I use uh, this uh, tape machine around almost creeping, so like this. Yeah, it's creeping, but the sound is gonna be really punchy. So sometimes I use this tape machine to creep the snare, um, especially the mid range of the snare. So kind of. It's really similar to dubstep snare. If you like this type of dubstep sounding snare, you should use tape simulator plugin to crimp the mid range. Okay, then last one is creeper uh, to uh, make them louder or something like this. Okay, then next one is a uh, snare room sound of something like this. Yeah, so as I said earlier, this snare room sound is really distinctive and unique, so I want to use this uh, sound as loud as possible. Okay, so next one, uh, so first one is a uh, virtual channel on to get analog vibe, something like this. Yeah, sounds mid-range ridgy. Okay, now next one is uh, EQ and sounds like this. Yeah, so I turn up a little bit of the high end that because of that the snare room sound has a kind of uh, a function of the uh, kind of guru and of the mix itself. So, so in order to make them cohesive, so I turn up this um, high end. So for in order to cohesive to uh, cymbals or high end of the guitars and so on. Yeah, that, that's why I turned up this uh, high end. Okay, next one is 1176 uh, plugging and to get explosive sound and sounds like this. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this type of explosive sound is rare for me. Yeah, I love this sound. You don't have to use exactly the same this plugin, but this plugin is the most explosive sounding uh, plugin for me. Yeah, then that's why I use this one. Yeah. Okay, next one is the virtual tape machine to get uh, explosive, I don't know, uh, analog vibe sounds like this. like this. Okay, so let's listen to the snare uh, close and sample on the overhead and room mic at the same time, sounds like this. Probably you may think that that snare uh, sample sound is too loud, and then so and you don't have to use uh, GGD invasion. Okay, so let's turn off this snare sample and sounds like this.
Yeah. Now you realize that the how important the snare room mic is. So this snare room mic is very unique. So that's why I say I always say that I want to use this sound as loud as possible. So even if I turn off this uh, snare sample sound, that we can feel an uh, invasion vibe. There are tens of drum libraries out there. So then we have to think about, so what makes this library unique? So in this case, so invasion. So invasion is this attack and room mics are really unique. So then I use this uh, sound as much as possible, but uh, some other libraries such as, so uh, for example, Spirit Drama 3 or uh, Death and Darkness and so on. So they sound different. So in this case, you have to think about uh, individually. So you have to think about so this uh, that library has this sound. So then I should use this sound as much as possible or something. Yeah. So every single drum library has uniqueness or characteristics. So then we have to uh, tell uh, that characteristic uh, immediately. Yeah. Okay. Next one is times. So in this song, I used four times. So yeah, four times. So then I uh, pant L, C, R, L. So completely uh, head pant uh, yeah, technique. So I love this type of uh, hard pant sound. Yeah. Okay. So basically the setting is the same, but EQ is not the same. Okay. So let's listen to the first one. Uh, yeah. High time. Okay. So first one is virtual channel or sound, sounds like this. Okay, then next one is EQ. Yeah, basically, so I uh, cut this mid range and also I cut this excess low end. And also, I thought that uh, times don't have enough attack. Yes, they have a really great attack, but for me, it's, it's not enough. So I uh, turned off uh, this high end to get attack key sound. Okay, sounds like this. Now next one is a compression and it sounds like this. So as four times I apply a compression at gain uh, at minus three dB gain reduction or minus four gain the dB gain reduction. Reason why is that I think times are the uh, instrument in between kick and snare. So that's why I uh, apply minus three to four dB gain reduction onto times. Yeah. Okay. Then next one is the tape machine and sounds like this. Yeah. Punchy. Okay. Then last one is a clipper and sounds like this. It's almost creeping, but so I think this creep sound is great for me because that so as for times I think that this doom sound is the sound which I really want to hear. So then in order to uh, accentuate that doom sound, I use creeper uh, to creep that sound. Yeah, but that creeping sound is gonna be kind of. Uh, erased in the mix, so then I don't care. <laughs> okay, then next one is the uh, time second, but uh, as I said earlier, it's the almost the same. So it sounds like this. Okay, EQ. Yeah, basically the same um, shape, sounds like this. Okay, and compression. Okay. Um, yeah, I should have sent it uh, yeah, minus three to four dB gain reduction. Yeah, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, because it sounds great. Yeah. Okay, then next one is tape machine. Okay. 
The last one is Creeper, sounds like this. Yeah, okay. Next one is a uh, floor term, a uh, right floor term. As for uh, floor terms, yeah, uh, right and left floor terms, uh, they don't sound punchy. Okay, so, okay, let's start with a uh, virtual channel, sounds like this. Okay, then next one is uh, EQ. Okay, basically the same uh, shape from the first and the second terms on sound like this. Okay, next one is compression. Okay, then next one is a uh, transient shaper. So uh, probably this is a uh, first time to see in this video. On this plugin, uh, we can accentuate the transient uh, individual uh, range. So in this case, so bass and low mid and mid and treble. Yeah, this is a very great for me. So, okay, so let's listen to the sound. Yeah, huge difference. So if I turn off this uh, kind of uh, treble uh, transient uh, boost, uh, sounds like this. Yeah, this is a really easy to use. And also, I tend to use this transient shaper too much. So sometimes it's really, it's gonna be really ear piercing. So in order to compensate that sound, so as I said earlier, so I used a tape machine to that uh, attenuate the, the excess uh, transient on sounds like this. Yeah, it has really great attack, but uh, it's not uh, ear piercing. And also it's really uh, mid-range rich and sounds really kind of punchy, yeah. Okay, the last one is a creeper and sounds like this. Okay, next one is the last uh, floor term. Yeah, left side floor term. Um, basically, I use the same processing from the right side floor term. Okay, so let's listen to that. Okay, next one is EQ and sounds like this. Yeah, basically the same. Okay, next one is compression. Okay, next one is transient shape valve. Next one is tape sh uh, simulator. And the last one is Creeper. Yeah, that's all. Okay, then next one is Tamu Room Mics. Yeah, this is a track which I really want to use. Town. the reason why is that this room mic is really unique. Yeah. Okay, so let's listen to the Tamu Room sound. Okay, then, so about your channel. Yeah, I don't EQ. Yeah, 
basically uh, to cut uh, low end uh, and high end. Yeah. Okay. Next one is the virtual mix rack. Yeah. As always, uh, eleven seventy six and sounds like this. Yeah, super explosive. And the last one is tape machine and sounds like this. Okay. Okay, so let's listen to the uh, terms in solo and with time room max and sounds like this. Yeah, this time room mic makes the sound really unique. Yeah, so I love this track. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the shells bus. So in shells bus, we can listen to kick and snare on the thumbs at the same time on sounds like this. So I thought that so I kind of mm, high end is not enough for me. So then I boosted uh, uh, at 8k hertz uh, by 7 dB and sounds like this. Now next one is a uh, virtual mix rack and I used uh, VCC uh, yeah and also I used 1176 so okay let's listen to it in one by one sounds like this Yeah so by using this VCC the the sound is going to be a uh, really punchier and also that it's gonna be kind of really glued and cohesive yeah and then next one is 1176 to get the uh, sustain of the drums okay sounds like this so if i didn't use this uh plugin that's sound is too porky so that's why i turned on this uh, plugin and uh, by the way i i turned down mix at 40 uh, uh reason why is okay so let's listen to the sound uh, with 100 uh, percent and something like this yeah too explosive so okay at 40 sounds like this Yeah, I think that uh, around 40 is the very best. Okay, let's turn down to uh, uh, from 100% to 0% or something like this. Yeah, around 30 to 70 or 60. Mm, uh, the, yeah, very great range, I think. But I think 40 is the uh, best. Yeah. Okay. The next one is uh, yeah, this uh, I forgot. Probably the SSL bus comp emulation compressor, I guess. Yeah, and it sounds like this. I use this compression tons. Reason why is that so snare sound or and the tom sounds are really pokey. So in order to attenuate that pokiness and also in order to get rich sustain, I turned on this compression of with 77 hertz hyper filter in order not to uh, use this compression onto kicks uh, tons. Okay, sounds like this again. Yeah, and also that drum sound is gonna be really cohesive. That's why I use this plugin. Okay, now let's move on to the cymbals. Basically, I always process cymbals at the same time, which means that I always process uh, overhead room mic and other spot mics such as, such as uh, hats and or rides and so on. Yeah, okay, then let's listen to the cymbals. <laughs> Yeah, 
and EQ is like this. Yeah, to get rid of uh, excess low end and uh, high end, and also to get a, a little bit of mid range, and and also to get rid of uh, ear piercing frequency. Yeah, and next one is the virtual mix rack to get yeah an analog vibe sounds like this. Yeah, great. Okay, next one is soothe. Soothe. Okay. It is really hard to uh, pronounce S and TH at the same time for us Japanese. Yeah, it's fucking hard. Anyway, okay, so let's listen to that. Yeah, to get rid of ear piercing frequency and kind of a terrible high end on the mid range and so on. Yeah, yeah, this plugin is really uh, unique and useful. Okay, let's move on to spot max. First one is a uh, hat one and uh, something like this. So basically, the spot max are uh, to get chill vibe, which means that so sometimes that uh, overhead max uh, don't have enough pan information in order to feel uh, which one is there or left or right or something. That's why we use spot mic uh, truck. So first one is a hat and then so I panned it to uh, L50 and something like this. Okay, then a uh, bunch of channel. And EQ. Uh, last one is a uh, bunch of rack, a mix rack and 1176 and something like this. So reason why I use this uh, compression is that uh, it's not for compression, it's to get a uh, saturation of this plugin, yeah. So this plugin has a really unique saturation, I think, so that's why I use this one. Okay, next one is hat 2. Actually, I copied and pasted from the hat 1, and so it's the exact the same processing, and sounds like this. Okay, and Q3. And the last one is uh, MIC-1176. Yeah, basically it's not responding. So uh, as I said earlier, I p copied and pasted from the um, previous hats once. Probably it's useless. <laughs> you don't have to use this flag in this case. Yeah, but I don't care. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the drums bass. Okay, drums bass so has uh, literally the all of the drum sound or something like this. Okay, then so next first one is <laughs> it's really really curious. So first one is mix uh, virtual mix bus. So it's not uh, the same one as this. Where is that? Yeah, this uh, virtual channel one. Uh, virtual channel is that uh, to is that emulation of the individual uh, channel of the consoles, but this one is is an uh, emulation of the uh, mix bus of the uh, consoles. So in this case, so probably uh, SSS 4000E, 4000G, and this one is uh, API, and this one is Neve, and this one is Trident, and this one is RCA uh, tube uh, broadcast uh, console, which is uh, from 1950s, I think, yeah. Yeah, so and then this plugin is really interesting. The reason why I use this plugin is that to get cohesiveness onto the drums. Okay, so let's turn on every single mix bus and sound like this. We 
can feel uh, some uh, cohesiveness and also some um, really complex saturation of the analog vibe. So yeah, that's why I use this uh, plugin. Okay. The next one is tape machine uh, to get cohesiveness and also that some mid range and sounds like this. Yeah, cool. Okay, last one is clipper and um, to shave off the excess transient or excess uh, peaks and sounds like this. Yeah, basically the same. So yeah, now I didn't use any reverbs onto these drums. So, but I used a uh, reverb onto snare close, a uh, snare drum close overhead mic, and also uh, some uh, snare drum room mic. Okay, so snare drum close mic and overhead mic sounds like this. reason why I use plate reverb on the snare close mic is that if I use this uh, reverb, the snare is going to be uh, really cohesive onto the, uh, onto the other uh, tracks. And also, the snare is going to be behind of the mix. And also, it's going to be, the sound is going to be a little bit fat. Okay, so let's turn off and on. Sounds like this. Thanks to the this reverb sound, the mid range and also a, a low end, I guess, is gonna be a little bit punchier on the fat. So that's why I use this reverb. Okay, again. Probably any reverb, uh, flat reverb, is gonna be okay, I guess, if you set the decay really shorter. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the snare room mic. So snare, as for snare room mic, I used a uh, EMT long hole reverb. So this is uh, literally the whole reverb and sounds like this. So reason why I use this reverb is that if I didn't use this reverb, the snare room mic is gonna be a little bit apparent in the mix. So kind of too explosive and too kind of mm, too in front of me. Okay, so let's listen to the drums in solo and then I'm going to turn off the reverbs and sounds like this. Okay, so let's listen to the sound in the context and I'm going to uh, turn off the reverbs and sounds like this. If I turn on this snare room mic uh, reverb, the sn snare is gonna be a little bit uh, natural, I guess. So, but if I didn't use that snare room mic is too apparent. And also if I didn't use this snare close mic reverb, the snare is a little bit pokey. So then that's why I use this snare plate reverb. Okay, so let's listen to the sound in the context again on something like this. Okay, that's all. So, as I said earlier, the Invasion is the most difficult drum library I've ever mixed. So, reason why is that this attack sound and also a lack of mid-range and low end. Yeah, to be honest with you, I wouldn't use this library. Reason why is that I always use uh, Superior Drama 3 and also I don't use this attack sound in my mix so but so this room mic sound is really unique so actually i sampled this un uh, unique uh, room mic to use uh, on sne uh, spare drama 3 so sometimes i use this as uh, yeah, snare room mic and other room mics but so basically it's not for me yeah so but if you want to use for example these uh, 
tons of、uh, symbols, yes, really unique symbols. You should buy this invasion. But, so, in my opinion, it's really hard to use because that it doesn't support external、uh, samples so, by default. So, we have to use other kind of、uh, sampler or other kind of trigger plugins such as Thread Drums Trigger 2 or something. Yeah, I forgot the name of that. Anyway. But so that's why this is a really hard to mix. In my opinion, it doesn't sound metal. <laughs> yeah, so this attack sound is, I think, for punk music or other rock music, I guess. So this library is not main drum library, it's kind of drum, one shot drum library, I guess. So I wouldn't use this library as、um, main drum library. Yeah. Okay, so that's all. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe and hit the like button. And then, until next time, bye bye.